When I was 24 and I had just graduated from university, I was sent to London to work with Tony Good, who is still our chairman. It was a fantastic journey for me because we didn't have any offices, we didn't have staff. All I had were clients and I, after a protracted legal battle, got back the company which consisted of a plastic file with 12 folders in it. And that's how my real association with Cox and Kings began. Our story began in 1758, when Richard Cox was appointed as an army agent. His job was to manage the economics of all the army regiments under a senior officer. Cox and company flourished through the centuries. The name became one everyone could trust. Cox and company went on to set up a bank, handle finances, insurance and logistics. We set up offices in important places around the world. We helped explorers discover the world. We even found our place in the popular culture of the day. While Cox and Company was growing, a publisher named Henry S. King purchased 25% of a soon-to-be historic publishing company called Smith Elder and Company. They went on to publish books by people that changed the way we look at words and the world. Henry S. King and Company even ran a successful banking and shipping business. It was through a series of serendipitous events that two powerful legacies merged to form Cox and Kings in 1922. For a brand to be trusted, uh, it needs to have been around for a long time and it needs not to have stepped outside the bounds of what's appropriate for a long time, and we are the oldest travel company in the world. We have counted leaders of countries and leaders of thought as our clients. We can trace a very important moment in the history of India, when Mahatma Gandhi traveled for the Round Table Conference in 1931, where he actually presented the case for independence, and then subsequently traveled to meet Mussolini. It was Cox and Kings that actually took care of him. In the entire process, we saw that he was safe. We traveled him from country to country, and he entrusted Cox and Kings with his travel. I think that tradition actually is still present with us, and we still travel world leaders and business and corporate heads. When I actually started out with practically no company. We had to very quickly establish our presence, which we did first in the UK. Here we became the India specialist, which is what our reputation in the market was actually famous for. So our next move was to start up a small operation in New York, focusing on the absolute luxury of travel. We then went out further afield and started up an operation in Australia. Immediately after that, we tied up with Mitsubishi Corporation, who wanted to increase counter trade into India. We then branched out first into Latin America. So that was our biggest innovation as a company. Finally, we did two other innovative things. We used to work with people like BBC Wildlife, Magazine, uh, Times, and The Telegraph to come out with what we call Reader's Offers. And here we would engage with specialists in their field who are contributors to the magazine or the newspaper who would then lead specific tours out to countries. Our first ambition was to make ourselves the largest outbound player in India. We achieved that in 2008 where we overtook all our competition. In fact, we were so successful that when Asia Money did a survey of the most popular brand in India, Cox and Kings actually ranked as number one. You know, the whole idea was all the time to give something new to India and the world. And that was that would keep us ahead. 
We started out by doing something called environmental journeys. We donated a percentage of our profits to things like the river dolphins in Brazil, the gorillas in Rwanda. We actually used to run things like botany tours, almost 116 tours to different parts of the world. Peter Kerker said, why don't we run a tourist trip? And that was the birth of something called the Bolshoi Express. The success of the Bolshoi Express was almost run away. Fast forward another 20 years, and yet another train we launched, the Maharaja's Express. Continuing in the same line, we launched the Deccan Odyssey, which today is rated as the best train in India. So we had these millennium parties, and they were fantastic. I mean, in fact, that is what triggered off destination parties and weddings. I'm proud to say that we never let any of these opportunities go past us. More importantly, in the industry, Cox and Kings is known as innovators. We are great crystal ball gazers into how trends will shape in the future. And keeping this in mind, if you look at our investments where we made Bharat Dekho a special division, this has been one of our key drivers where we realized the potential on how important our domestic travel business was going to be. I think insofar as we have a secret, it has been to move with the times and to anticipate how the times are moving. The management started pouring in you know, millions of dollars or crores of rupees 20 years ago when technology would be the mantra going forward. We also innovate hugely on our technology platforms. And I think this ability to innovate is what makes Cox and King so special. Just the fact that we are either market leaders where we're number one in the areas that we actually operate in. So we're number one as far as outbound travel from India goes. We're the number one hybrid hostel hotel operator in the world. And we're the number one education travel company in the world. And I think this is what makes us special, is that we have the ability, I feel, to just stay that one step ahead of the competition. Because we've come out with things like Enable Travel. This is for people who may have disabilities. We've come out with 360 degrees travel. We've taken other products like women-only tours, recently launched our self-drive holidays, and um, finally, we have a really interesting food program. We've tied up with MasterChef uh, Travel to be their sole representatives in India. Starting from a small base of three staff in our London office to several thousand people across the globe in various countries, various cities, all dedicated to travel and excellence. So our path is quite well defined as a company. I don't think we want to rest on our laurels. We want to continue to be able to innovate. I like to think that we are not just the best because we are the longest established, but that we are the longest established because we are the best travel company in the world.